right now. A woman dead and a man in critical condition after an overnight shooting. Alicia Barrera joins us live with the details just ahead. And the presidential candidates are getting ready for the Iowa caucuses, all of them trying to get their final pitches in before the first voters are heard. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 40 degrees, a chilly start to your Sunday morning, but if it's anything like yesterday, it is going to be gorgeous out there. Good morning, 6 o'clock this Sunday. February 2nd. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, so very cold right now, mm -hmm. but yeah, the payoff is great. Yesterday, we just loved it. We got to walk around downtown. Go downtown. We yeah. went to the KSAC Corral, and yes. I will say, yes. if you were watching during the 8 o'clock hour yesterday morning, Sarah Spivey had such a great line, and she articulated it perfectly. The fans that were out at the KSAC Corral, if yeah. you're watching now, thank you so much because we had people come up to us and say, you guys are like family. We start every weekend so with you. So we got you. to meet a lot of our family mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, yesterday, I was gonna say yesterday afternoon, yesterday mm -hmm. morning. Yeah, it was a great turnout. So it thank you guys fantastic. for coming out. Yeah. I will say, was not able to keep up with Justin when he came to social media. <laughs> this man had like 40 selfies on Instagram. 40 is a bit of a... <laughs> But I did take some Instagram selfies now. I was kind of proud of myself, but it, it was nice hanging out with the fam, as you guys mentioned. We, we loved it. And it was beautiful yesterday. We had great weather. We're going to see it again today. A couple changes, though, by the afternoon. We'll get some more cloud cover. Temperatures right now, sitting at 40 degrees at the airport, says 54 Bernie stage. You can ignore that. I think that's an erroneous reading there. But 31 Kerrville, 34 Comfort, 35 in Bandera. Or there are a couple of places this morning below freezing. Here's what we're watching. This high cloudiness in Mexico, that's going to work in today. So we'll start off mostly sunny, but by the afternoon, clouds will be on the increase, and we'll see quite a bit more cloud cover uh, late uh, this evening. Okay, let's go to Pennsylvania. Puxatani Phil is supposed to, well, we'll find out if he sees a shadow. And that's coming up here in just a few minutes, but we're going to zoom in here on Puxatani. They got some snow moving in, so chances are he's not going to see a shadow. We'll find out, though, for sure. Uh, here's what you need to know this week. Increasing clouds warm today. Tomorrow, more clouds. Chance for some showers. And then as we get towards midweek, it gets really interesting. Strong cold front. There could be some wintry weather in the hill country. And that'll be something to watch for. We'll have more on that in just a bit. But for today, up to 71. Again, increasing clouds. Southwest Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Guys? Thank you, Justin. Overnight on the city's north side, a woman shot and killed. Another man left in critical condition. Police called out just before midnight, all to an apartment complex in the 11,700 block of Vance Jackson. Our Alicia Benetta is live from Public Safety Headquarters with the latest. Good morning, Max Stephanie. Well, not much information has been get a, given on that fatal victim other than we know she's a female in her 20s and was found shot dead in her living room at that apartment that she was living in. But here's what police have told us so far. This all unfolded around 1140 last night. They were called to the north side. Um, they were called out to park at Wall Street Apartments. When police walked into the apartment, they say they found the woman on the ground in the living room. Near her was a male with a gunshot wound. And police haven't provided any information on the extent of his injuries, but we do know, um, of course, he survived and he's in University Hospital in critical condition. And police tell me they were able to get a few words in with that victim. And the next half hour on GMSA, I'll let you know if there have been any unrest and what this victim has told police so far with the shooting. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Alicia. Also new this morning, a man is now in custody after police say he stabbed and killed his friend. Now, this is new video where 31-year-old Abel Garcia was taken into custody late last night. The incident happened on Friday in the 400 block of Harlan Avenue around 2 p.m. Now, police say an argument broke out between Garcia and his friend. When police arrived, they found 44-year-old Albert Adame with a major cut on his neck. He was later taken to University Hospital where he died from his injuries. Joint Base San Antonio Lackland has been approved as one of four quarantine zones in the country for the coronavirus. Now, the base would screen military personnel and American contractors re entering the United States, all coming from overseas. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper approved a request for housing support for 1,000 people who may need to be quarantined after traveling to China. Air Force officials say that there will be hotel-like facilities on the base, which will serve as a shelter for up to 2,500 military personnel and contractors, 
while they are screened for the virus. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg has issued a statement saying that the Metro Health Department will also be monitoring the situation as a precautionary matter. It, it is important to mention that no confirmed coronavirus has yet been reported here in Texas. And Delta is now suspending flights between the U.S. and China in response to the coronavirus outbreak. The airline is suspending flights beginning today. Delta joins American and United in canceling flights in response to the global health crisis. The airline expects its U.S.-China flights to remain suspended at least through April 30th. And if you plan to fly soon, listen up. The TSA sending out new guidelines to U.S. airlines amid this rapid spread of the coronavirus. The airlines will be required to ask all passengers booked on flights from outside the United States if they've been to China in the last 14 days. Chinese officials coming from China and connecting through foreign airports will not be allowed to travel. U.S. citizens who have been to China will be rebooked to seven gateway airports. Those include JFK, LAX, and Atlanta, among others. Now, this set of guidelines goes into effect today. In your morning headlines, Florida police are still searching for a man who shot and killed two people at a funeral. Rivera Beach police say it happened at a church near Palm Beach yesterday. They estimate 13 rounds were fired shortly after the service concluded. Now, shots left a 15-year-old boy and a man dead and two other people injured. Police are still looking for that shooter. Time to hit the campaign trail. It is the last day of campaigning before the first voters are heard in the 2020 election. Democratic presidential candidates racing to make their final pitches all ahead of the Iowa caucuses set for tomorrow. But with the impeachment trial also set to resume on Monday, some senators running for president are splitting their time between Iowa and D.C. Meredith Wood had more, has more. I thought all last week I'd be in Iowa going to one town after another, but I had a constitutional duty. With the impeachment trial on hold until early next week. We are adjourned. Democratic senators running for president left the Capitol Friday night in a rush to Iowa, hitting the trail for the final days of campaigning before the Iowa caucuses on Monday. This is our moment in history. This all comes down to this pivotal moment and it launches right here in Iowa. No matter what your political view may be, we do not want a president who has contempt for the Constitution, contempt for the rule of law, contempt for democracy. While the senators in the race acted no. as jurors in the impeachment Super. trial, other candidates pounced on the campaign trail, vying for breakthrough moments to win over any undecided Iowans. The fact is the next president is going to inherit a, uh, a country divided and a world in disarray. And uh, there's going to be no time for on-the-job training. With the caucuses looming, candidates bounced around the state, door knocking, holding rallies, town halls, and community events, counting down the hours before Iowans make their voices heard. And now I have one more chance, eye to eye, to ask you to support me on February 3rd, this coming Monday. I'm Meredith Wood reporting. And there's about one month left before Bear County can vote in the primary election. But a big deadline set for tomorrow. It is the deadline to register to vote. To help people register, the Bear County Elections Office has extended their hours today. They will be open from noon until 4 this evening. And tomorrow, they're going to be open from 8 in the morning to 7 at night. For all the information you need to know to register, you can find that right now on KSAT.com. And time now is 6.08, 40 degrees out. And go Spurs go. Another win for the black and silver. That's still ahead. It was close. We're going to have the highlights and what's next. Also, great. speaking of what's next, not as optimistic, tax season is here. What you need to be aware of when you're filing. That's next. And taking a look outside with live cam. I, I know it's 40 degrees and it was 40 degrees yesterday morning, mm -hmm. but for some reason this morning just felt so much colder. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe it was because of the beautiful afternoon we experienced yesterday. Yesterday even dipped down to 39. I know. It might, well, we'll see what happens today. We're going to check in with Justin in just a bit. And welcome back at 612. So it's tax season, and that can also mean scam season. The Better Business Bureau getting the word out with Tax Identity Theft Awareness Week. Most people moan and groan about filing their taxes, but for a scammer, it can be a chance to steal your return. All they need is your social security number. And the Better Business Bureau also says to be aware of IRS imposters. It says if someone calls you and demands money immediately, 
do not pay it. Mm, Good guys, advice. Have you guys started this? Being scammed? No. Sorry to follow your taxes. <laughs> Ideally, no. No, not yet. Not yes. yet. Yes. Yes. Look at you, process. Justin. You okay. got to stay ahead of these. It's true. Yeah. Stay ahead of the game. I started collecting all the receipts and everything. Yeah. But haven't actually. Well, I get so excited about the return if, if I get one. Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> I'm like, that, is, that is a good payoff. Mm. And started early. Uh, today is Super Bowl Sunday. Yes. It's also Groundhog Day. So we've got a lot to mm. jump into here. I'm wearing this graphic out, but I love it because. Love it. Wait, before we get into the actual weather. Aww. Oh, this is fantastic. That's cute. I've never yeah, seen this right graphic. Here. Yeah. <gasps> Hey, there's good a Super job. Bowl good that's job. awesome. Take credit for it. I well, who that. you got, Justin, left or right? See, uh, that's the tough question. Uh, <laughs> we only ask the hard-hitting questions here. Chiefs. I got oh. the Chiefs. Yeah. Steph? The red team. I hate you. <laughs> the red team? They both have elements of red, so that's... Uh, 70 degrees, uh, at least here in San Antonio. That's actually probably going to be the temperature in Miami, too, for the Super Bowl, so right there, but uh, mostly cloudy. And uh, it should be great if you're planning on growing out or anything like that. We will see a little bit more cloud cover this afternoon, but it's not going to be a big issue. 40 degrees right now. Dew point is at 32. The air is still pretty dry. Northwesterly winds at about 3. There's hardly any wind out there, so we don't have a wind chill right now. Uh, temperatures 31 in Kerrville. We're below freezing there. 34 Uvalde, 34 Hondo, 36 in Creuso Springs. So a lot of 30s on the map. It will warm up pretty quickly. Here's what we're watching. Some thin high clouds out to the west. These are going to be shifting in today. It's not going to go completely cloudy this afternoon, but you'll just notice some of those uh, high clouds drifting in. Now let's go over to Pennsylvania. We've been keeping an eye on this to see what Punxsutawney Phil is going to see. And look at that snow starting to move in. So there will be some snowflakes flying. Chances are he's not going to see his shadow, which would mean winter comes to an end, right? I always get this backwards. Yes. Yes, exactly. Now let's go to the other side of the country, and we've got our next storm system starting to move in. This one is going to be a powerful one. You know, we made, through, we made it through January without a freeze. It was warm. This is going to bring about changes. We're going to draw in some cold air from Canada with this system, and we're going to get some precipitation with it. So what does that mean for us? Let's take a look at the future cast. We get the clouds this afternoon. Let's fast forward, though, to Monday. This is tomorrow at 5 o'clock. I do think we'll have some showers, maybe even a thunderstorm around. There's probably enough energy in the upper parts of the atmosphere where we could see that. So tomorrow, about a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain. Things quiet down a little bit Tuesday. It'll be almost hot on Tuesday before this front comes in. This is Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Here comes that strong cold front. And then by Wednesday morning, we've got showers behind it. A cold rain, I might warn you. And notice that we start to see some pink on the map here. This is Wednesday night. There is going to be enough cold air, I think, where we could see a little bit of a wintry mix uh, across the hill country, Edwards Plateau. That could uh, continue over through Wednesday night into early, early Thursday morning before all this clears out. We're not looking for accumulation. Shouldn't be a huge issue, but it's something we do want to watch. And I don't know that San Antonio is going to get any of that, but certainly to our north, it's a possibility. 71 degrees today. We could see a few 80s on the map down to the south and west. Mostly cloudy by 4 o'clock. And then tomorrow, uh, 71 on Monday, breezy, 30% chance of rain, 80 on Tuesday. And there's that 40% chance of showers. Wednesday, 30% chance of a wintry mix in the hill country. Wednesday night, a high of only 47 on Wednesday until we get to 80 on Tuesday. That's so funny. <laughs> Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah. Well, we'll be prepared. Yes. Thank you, Justin. Yes. Thanks, Justin. 616, 40 degrees out. And are you wondering how much longer winter will be around? Well, just ahead on GMSA, we're going to find out whether the groundhog will see its shadow. Also, they're having like a party out there. What party? We had uh, the groundhog <laughs> and oh, I They had like a whole thing. We're going to give you a Super live Bowl look party. at what's going on. Speaking of Super Bowl mm -hmm. party, it's time to gather your friends. The preparations are underway. We have a full preview on the big game. That's next. Good morning and welcome back. Happy Sunday. The Spurs taking center court at the AT&T Center for the last time in nearly a month prior to the start of the rodeo road trip. And they took on the Charlotte Hornets last night. Hornets not doing great this year. Anyway, Spurs were down by as many as 19 points in the third quarter. They rallied back. They stood strong. DeMar DeRozan finishing with a game high 
on the Spurs, 24 points, but the bench coming in clutch. Jacopoto, an efficient 17 points. Derek White adding in 12. The Silver and Black moving to 22 and 24 right before they embark on what looks like really tough rodeo road trip. So next up, to start that road trip, Spurs facing a familiar foe at the Sp Staples Center tomorrow at 9.30 in the evening, taking on the LA Clippers and of course, Kawhi Leonard. Pro football coverage. All right, time to talk football. Today is the culmination of the NFL season, the gritty playoffs, and for so many players, years of hard work. Today is Super Bowl 54, and there is a super matchup to decide the NFL's 100th season. Two teams taking over the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami this evening. Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. Chiefs led by head coach Andy Reid, an absolute superstar quarterback and Patrick Mahomes leading a prolific and explosive offense on the other side of the ball. Head coach Kyle Shanahan and the Niners, one of if not the best defense in all of football thanks to that front line of Nick Bosa, secondary led by Richard Sherman. The expectation is a great offense taking on a great defense. Who will prevail right now in Vegas? The Chiefs are a short favorite. And talking about the big game, this Super Bowl will be the first with 5G, the Hard Rock Stadium, the Miami airport, and much of the city being outfitted with new technology. Fans will need a 5G device to connect to it, though sports franchises hope that the technology will encourage people to buy tickets and otherwise engage with the teams. So, Steph, you got the red team winning? Yep, the red team. All right. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I'm saying Chiefs. Love Patrick Mahomes. Time now is 622, 40 degrees out. And it's going to last longer. We're talking about winter. Today's Groundhog Day. We're going to find out soon. All right. Welcome back. We are going right to Cobbler's <laughs> Knob. Yay! We are looking at Puxatawney Phil. So, Justin, explain what's going on here. Well, there's a Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> it is yeah. National yeah. Groundhog he, Day. So he, yeah. so, he just came out of his little quarters he right did. now. He did. And yes. it's snowing, by the way. So, I don't know that he's going to... He's going to see his shadow. Let's listen yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, let's listen in. Bill, we got two uh, scrolls here. One is winter, one is summer. What do you think, buddy? Huh? Spring, spring, spring. spring, spring. I don't know. What do you think, buddy? Huh? I don't know. What do you think? The closest one to you? We just set a record. You got it? Put it up to my post. All right. Let's hear see ye, it. hear ye, hear ye. Now this second day of February 2nd, 2020, 02, 02, 2020. The 134th annual trek of the Punxsutawney Groundhog Club. Punxsutawney Phil, the seer of seers, prognosticator of all prognosticators, was awakened from his burrow to the cheers of thousands upon thousands of his faithful followers from around the world. In Groundhog Ease, Phil directed the inner circle to his prediction scroll, which reads, it's a filled fantastic day in these beautiful woods. Thousands and thousands in the Knob neighborhood. You faithful followers are the best, it's true. You, who wouldn't want neighbors just like you? Now my forecast on a day that's a palindrome will cause some to cheer and some to moan. So do I hope you think it's neighborly for there is no shadow of me. Spring, it'll be early. Woo! It's a shame. Way to go, Phil. The prognosticator <laughs> of all prognosticators. Listen, this oh, is a very cool. scientific process. Oh, yes, Clearly. of course. He wrote that, too, yeah. that official accordance. Yes. It's great. Well, Groundhog Yeast. Yeah, yeah, I was glad to see Phil. He's <laughs> <laughs> looking great. <laughs> all right. Time now, 628, 40 degrees out. And just ahead on GMSA, Max sits down with Councilman Roberto Trevino talking about reallocating funds from the aquifer to transportation. Plus, surgery, a long dominated field by men. What a one woman is doing to make a big change. That's next. 
Good morning and happy Sunday, 630 this February 2nd, and it is 40 degrees. Yesterday, though, we even dipped into the 30s. I know, but it got really nice, and I think the same thing for today, Justin, possibly. Yeah, we're going to see more nice weather. Yesterday was close to perfect. We didn't even have a cloud in the sky, really, not until the afternoon at least. We're going to see a little bit more cloud cover today, but temperatures are still going to make it into the 70s. Right now, though, it is chilly. If you're heading out the door, grab the coat. 40 degrees at the airport, 31 Kerrville, 50 Rock Springs, 37 in Del Rio. And uh, dew points down there at 32 northwest. Really winds at about 3 miles per hour. Winds are really light, so there's not a wind chill right now. We may see a little bit of a wind chill from time to time this morning, but temperatures will warm up pretty quickly today. Let's take a look at the satellite picture. You see some of those clouds down there in Mexico. Those will work their way up into South Texas today. These are those thin high clouds, though, so it's just filtered sun. It's not going to be a uh, cloudy day. You'll just notice uh, a few more clouds. Uh, it, here's what you need to know next couple days. So warm today, 70s, but more clouds and a chance for showers tomorrow. I think we could even see a thunderstorm or two. Rain chances are at about 30%. We get better rain chances with our next cold front, which is scheduled for Wednesday. And this is going to bring some really cold air with it. We could even see a little bit of wintry weather in the hill country. It's possible by Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Forecast for today, though, 58 degrees by 10 o'clock, 68 noontime. We'll be up around 74 with southwesterly winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour. We're going to talk about this cold blast. Time it out for you. That's coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Right now, police investigating a deadly shooting on the city's north side. One person shot and killed another in critical condition. The 911 call came just before midnight to an apartment complex in the 11,700 block of Vance Jackson. Our Alicia Barrera is live from Public Safety Headquarters. Now, Alicia, earlier you mentioned one man survived the shooting. What has he told police about how this all unfolded? Well, the victim told police that he heard someone knocking on the door. So when he opened up, those shots were fired and two people were hit, him and another woman. But here's the thing. Police say they don't have a description on a suspect. They're still looking into those claims as well as a possible motive and any, lev uh, any evidence left behind by the shooter. Police say this all unfolded last night around 1140, and that was at an apartment complex at park at Wall Street Apartments and when police walked into the apartment they found a woman on the ground in the living room dead. Near her was that male with a gunshot wound. Police haven't provided any information on the extent of his injuries but we do know he's at, he's at University Hospital recovering in critical condition. And as far as that victim, we don't know much about her. Police have only said that she is a woman in her 20s, and again, she was found dead in her living room. As of now, no arrests have been made. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. This morning, San Antonio police still searching for a suspect. They say shot someone multiple times. All of this happening yesterday afternoon on the west side in the 200 block of Ray Molino around 4.30 p.m. Police say two men got into an argument. One of them pulled out a gun, shot the other. The victim taken to University Hospital. We are still waiting for more information from police. And the Philippines reporting the first death from the coronavirus. Philippine officials say a 44-year-old Chinese man from Wuhan was admitted to a hospital a week ago with fever, cough, and sore throat before he developed pneumonia. His partner also tested positive. The Philippines has joined the U.S. and others in banning entry to travelers from China. Now, there has been no confirmed cases of the coronavirus here in Texas, but it is still making waves here in San Antonio. Joint Base San Antonio Lackland has been listed as one of four U.S. bases approved as possible quarantine zones for those who may be infected with the virus. Now, in a statement, San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg said, in part, quote, we were notified that the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and Department of Defense have decided to evacuate American citizens from China and quarantine them at U.S. military installations, including Lackland Air Force Base. We have been told that these individuals have no symptoms of the virus and pose no risk to our community. We should all be comforted by the extra precautions being taken by the federal, state, and local health officials, end quote. Now, if you have any questions, we have many more details right now on KSAT.com. We need to study this a little further. We need to we need to uh, uh, look at this as part of this whole plan. I mean, so and I think I think we're 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 getting there. But these are the kind of questions that, that I have. I just want to make sure that what we don't do is is create a a, a plan that's not considering the the needs of of the community that might might be different from one neighborhood to the next. 
That was District 1 Councilman Roberto Trevino talking about reallocating funds from the Aquifer Protection Plan to transportation here in the Alamo City. I talked with him about a large variety of topics affecting the Alamo City, and he will be the main subject of this week's leading essay. So tune in later today on GMSA at 8 to hear more on the conversation with Councilman Trevino. Time now, 636, 40 degrees out. And still ahead, I want to make sure your TV picture has the best settings for the big game. We have what you need to know so your at-home game experience is at its best. And next, if the Super Bowl is not really your thing, we have a look at a film that is making its debut at the box office this weekend. And taking a look outside with live cam, 40 degrees. Yeah, pretty cold. Definitely <laughs> pack a couple of jackets if you want this morning, but you may lose it later in the afternoon. We're going to check in with Justin. We'll be right back. Good morning and happy Sunday. Did you know there's a big football game today? Well, what game? I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes. It is Super Bowl Sunday, and traditionally, this weekend is a slow stretch at the box office. Yes, but CNN's David Daniel takes a look at what the experts are saying about a new thriller that's in theaters right now. I lost my family three years ago. If it wasn't an accident, there was a bomb on that plane. I need your help to find the ones who did this. Blake Lively plays an instrument of revenge in the rhythm section. She stars as Stephanie Patrick, an ordinary woman pushed to the brink after learning her family was killed in a terrorist attack. With nothing left to lose, she enlists a mentor, played by Jude Law, who uses the concept of music to train her to become a deadly assassin. You gotta get your rhythm section under control, like in music, remember? And give your heart as the drums, your breathing as the bass. Good. It's the easy part. What's the hard part? Living with it. The film is adapted from a novel by the same name. The story focuses on Stephanie assuming a variety of personas in order to get her revenge. I'm going to say this once. Even if you succeed, it won't be worth it. I've got nothing to lose. What about your life? What about it? In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. What are the thoughts? I don't think a lot of people will be watching it today. No, that's, that's, that's my guess. That's a good that's a good take. Yeah, thanks. It looks good, <laughs> but just not a good line. He's like, I feel like I just watched the whole movie. I feel you like I know, know everything that happened now. Well, maybe there's a crazy twist. I'm sure there is. Jude Law was involved in the terrorist attack. Oh. Boom. I don't know if that actually happened. <laughs> people are going to be so mad They're going to be like, why would you spoil the movie? <laughs> that is true. You're in a lot of trouble now. Uh-oh. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, 40 <laughs> degrees out now. Yesterday was gorgeous out there. Yep. Oh, Miami is going to be nice Miami. Too. Yeah, 68 degrees. I wish I had Super Bowl tickets, but we all do. I don't have that kind of money. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> northerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour there. Sunny skies should be good football weather. Uh, meantime, for us, we're at 74, so really just about the same. Uh, if you're planning on grilling out tonight or whatever plans you may have for the Super Bowl, it's, it's all good. Southwest really winds about 5 to 10 here. Look at that. Sun is starting to come up. Some beautiful colors out there on live cam. Still chilly, 40 degrees at the airport. We're down now to 37 at Port SA and 37 at Stenson, 48 Randolph. Not a lot of wind out there, so there's not a lot of wind chill. But with clear skies and light winds, that allows those temperatures to really drop off. 34 degrees in Hondo, 34 Uvalde. We are below freezing in Kerrville, 31 degrees there. 43 in New Braunfels and 34 down there in Pleasanton. Forecast high temperatures today back up into the 70s. We should be actually a little bit warmer than this. I'd say uh, mid 70s uh, later today here in San Antonio. Radar and satellite, no rain, but we do have the clouds. You see some of those thin high clouds in Mexico. Those will be working through uh, South Texas today, probably not until the afternoon. So it gets a little more cloudy later today, uh, but should not be a big issue. So let's uh, go up to the Pacific Northwest. Now here's our next storm system. And this one promises to be Pretty good one. Uh, we've had these fronts come through. They haven't done much for us. This one is going to bring some cold air. I think it's going to draw down some cold air from Canada, and it may eventually cause a little bit of late wintry precip. We'll talk about that in just a second. But as we look at the big picture here, it's actually pretty quiet across most of the country. Some snow up there across the northeast, as we saw there in Pennsylvania, and then you've got some snow in the Intermountain West ahead of that next system. Temperatures 30s and 40s. This really isn't all that cold, but Look up in Canada. You start to see these big negative numbers. You know that cold air is building and it's ready to spill south. 
And I think that's what we're going to be dealing with next week. So here's a look at the future cast. Uh, by tomorrow, I do think we'll have some showers and uh, maybe even a thunderstorm in the forecast. Right now we have the rain chances at about a 30% shot. So as you head off to work tomorrow, go ahead and grab the umbrella just in case. And then on Tuesday, I think Tuesday is actually a pretty quiet day, but here comes the front. And by late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning, we're in the cold air. Here come the showers. Rain a pretty good bet with this front. Light showers for the most part. But as we get into Wednesday night, look what happens. You start to see a little bit of pink here. That's an indication we could see a little bit of a mix of wintry precip. Most of this is going to be really light. It's probably not going to accumulate. We've been warm, so chances are we're not going to see any issues on the roadways other than maybe some bridges and overpasses. And then the, even into Wednesday night, we still show a little bit of that, maybe around Kerrville and there in the Hill Country. Chances are here in San Antonio will be just fine, but we'll keep an eye on it. If anything changes, we'll let you know. Thursday morning, all of this is out of here and we're clearing out. So forecast for today, up around 74 for a high. We'll see those increasing clouds. By noontime, we're sitting at 68, so really a pretty nice day. 71 tomorrow, 30% chance of rain. 80 on Tuesday, all the way up to 80, and then all the way down to 47 this next front. And there is, again, that slight chance of maybe a little bit of a wintry mix in the hill country. Uh, otherwise, just a cold rain here in San Antonio. Gotcha. But as for today, we're pretty lucky. Another good day. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, before we go to break, uh -huh. did extensive research on this one. You okay. brought up Super Bowl prices. Oh, the cheapest goodness. ticket available on StubHub, yep. $5,301 <laughs> per ticket, and you're on the far right corner. I think it is actually like the highest up seat, row 30. Yeah. I wonder if that price will drop during the game. Mm. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> All right. 646, 40 degrees out. And just ahead, a rare sight, a woman surgeon leading a group of all female college and medical students. See how that woman surgeon is inspiring the next generation of female surgeons. Okay, who doesn't like that little scratch? Right, oh, yeah, get a little spot right there. Oh, you're gonna meet this guy. Oh, if I keep this up, I bet he dozes off. You're gonna meet him coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. <laughs> Well, who wouldn't like this? One person snuggling, one person scratching behind the ears. <laughs> he's all set. So Wendy's here from the Animal Defense League. Who's this guy? This is Squirt, and he's seven months old. He's about almost eight pounds, nine pounds already. That's a, that's a lot of cats. He's a big guy. Um, he loves to play. He is a snuggle bug. Uh, I caught him the other day running around the teen room. He's a teenager. Okay. And uh, playing with his buddies, and he was panting so hard, he was running around. It was really quite a sight. I'd never seen a cat panting before. <laughs> it's mountain cedar season, and he's suffering from a little bit of uh, some, some sinus problems and some allergies as well. But other than that, he's just, and I love the coloring on him, that white. Okay, it's okay, buddy. Yes, you don't have to try and get up now. It won't be long. Yes. Kitties and TV studios don't mix too well. So what y'all got going on? Well, we have um, some great news. We are now, as of a couple of weeks ago, we have been approved to uh, by the city of San Antonio to accept animals directly into the shelter for people who need to surrender their pets for whatever reason or if they find strays on the street, you can take them directly to our ADL main campus. And there's a small intake fee of $50, but, you know, we are a true no-kill shelter. And so the animal will be safe with us, and we will find them their forever home. Okay, and you're uh, pledged to take in about two thousand. Uh, two thousand over the course of the year, if there's room for it, which means they still need to adopt some out there to make uh, empty out those cages, right? Right. And please go to our website. There's all the instructions there for uh, direct intake with us. And um, if you would call us and let us know in advance, that would be great too. And remember, that does not mean you just dump them in the in the parking exactly lots. Exactly right. That's is, not what that means. Which is, which is against the law. So anyway, and for more information on if you have to drop off an animal or adopting like little squirt here head on out to the uh, 11300 Nacogdoches main campus there the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo 655-1481 is their phone number oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> you just looked at the camera at the last minute <laughs> all right on to the next story surgery a field long dominated by men but one woman surgeon now on a mission to change that and change it for good so our Erica Hernandez has the details well, we're going to go now to see the next patient. This is a woman surgeon leading an all-female group of students on rounds at the hospital. I think being a woman in surgery is incredible. It's the most rewarding profession. Dr. Sharona Ross is an elite group with few women. While 54% of all medical students are women, only 24% choose surgery. I always thought it was a male 
kind of thing and oh you can't raise a family it's kind of the thing I've been told. You hear how grueling these uh, residencies are. Um, they take so much of your life. A shortage of 23,000 surgeons is predicted by 2032 so getting women to choose surgery is important. It's not easy but it's not impossible and if you want it enough I have four kids and four kids with all the training that I had. I have two fellowships. Always come prepared. Dr. Ross founded the annual Women in Surgery Career Symposium to bring women surgeons together from around the world to mentor female students. How do you prioritize? The conference committee chooses topics to address frequent issues of concern. You can be strong, you can be feminine, um, and still be professional. I want to be a leader. I want to show other women that this is possible. It's a critical mission not only to empower women, but also to meet the medical needs of our country in the future. The 2020 Women in Surgery International Career Symposium is happening next month in Clearwater, Florida. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Good morning and happy Super Bowl Sunday. So unless you have an extra $5,000 laying around, you are probably going to be watching the game on your TV <laughs> and you're obviously going to want the best picture quality you can get. Yes, so 12 on your size. Marilyn Moritz says there are three settings you're going to want to turn off. Maybe you dropped big bucks for a brand new TV, but now that it's home, it's not picture perfect. Newer TVs come with lots of features that may sound like performance boosters. But Consumer Reports tech expert says there are three settings that actually make your picture worse and you should turn them off. The first one is noise reduction. Noise or snow was a big issue with older TVs, but today's digital signals are cleaner. The problem is that when you engage noise reduction, it comes at the expense of fine detail and texture. So images look a lot softer. When you turn off noise reduction, you'll get more detailed looking pictures and more natural looking images. The next setting to turn off is sharpness control, which artificial boost fine detail. Now the problem is you may seem like at first that you're getting greater detail but sharpness control is actually masking fine detail and it can create halos around objects in the picture. So turn it way down or off. And the third and perhaps most annoying TV setting is motion smoothing. Some movies and a lot of TV shows are shot at 24 frames per second or 24 hertz. Video, on the other hand, is shot at 60 hertz, which is why some programs like game shows, sports, and reality shows have a lot smoother motion than films. The problem is when you turn on motion smoothing, it makes movies look a lot like video, something that people call the soap opera effect. He says don't worry about tinkering with settings because most TVs have a reset option to restore the factory settings. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Overnight on the city's north side, one woman is shot dead and another man is left uninjured. That victim telling police that someone was at the door and when he opened up, both of them were shot. But here's the thing, police tell us they don't have a description of a suspect, so they're still looking into those claims as well as any evidence left behind. Also a possible motive. Police say it happened at Park at Wall Street Apartments around 1140 last night. When police walked into that apartment, they found the woman on the ground in the living room dead. Near her was a male with a gunshot wound. He's at University Hospital recovering in critical condition. This morning, not much information has been provided on that fatal victim. Other than that, she is in her 20s and was found dead in her living room. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. And right now we're sitting at 40 degrees. We'll be up around 68 noontime and look for temperatures to rise to about 74 this afternoon. You will notice some increase in clouds today. We'll have some chances of rain tomorrow. About a 30% shot, mostly cloudy on your Monday. Strong cold front heads our way Tuesday night. Very cool. We'll be prepared. Yes. Very cool. It's going to be another gorgeous day out. Yeah, it will be. Uh, it will be very nice today uh, with temperatures in the 70s. And then by the middle part of the week, that's when we're going to have to watch this cold front and see what it does. Maybe a little bit of wintry precip in the whole country. That will be interesting. Yes. All right. Thank you, Justin. We are about to take an hour long break for Good Morning America, but don't worry. We're going to be back here at 8 a.m. and we have so much to talk about. Leading SA, sitting down with Roberto Trevino, and we were talking about how pens fly. <laughs> no, we are going to be talking about so many things in and around San Antonio. You're not yes. going to miss it. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. All right. Thanks, guys. See you in a minute. That's impressive. <laughs> Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Answering a doorbell turns to gunshots. This morning, one woman is dead and a man is in critical condition. We have details from the victim just ahead.
Plus, finding out what's next for San Antonio, what one area councilman says the Alamo City can expect to see in the next 20 years. And let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. 41 degrees, but a gorgeous start to your Sunday morning. Hopefully, it looks something like it did yesterday. Yeah. Beautiful out there. Beautiful shot right behind me. The mm -hmm. sun's out, so that's sun's good news. All right. Well, good, good morning. News. I'm Max Massey. I'm Stephanie Serna. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Absolutely. And if you were out and about yesterday, like we were, went to the KSAC Corral, and yes. it was fantastic. Everyone who was out there, so nice. Didn't get enough barbecue, I was a little upset about it. Yeah, so Max and I got there a little late because we were mm. here, uh, but I think other people got food, so they that's did. good. Everybody was in a great was mood, beautiful. and it was and nice to meet you. It was fantastic <laughs> to meet you. Our own Justin Horn was out there snapping selfies with everyone except for us. Well, I would have snapped a selfie with, if I had seen you guys, but uh, I think I left before you guys got there. It was a lot of fun, though. We really did enjoy it, and the weather was gorgeous yesterday. We had sunny skies. We're going to see a lot of that again today. Temperatures, though, a little chilly to start. 41 degrees at the airport, 32 Kerrville. We are down to freezing there, 35 in Uvalde. And uh, mostly sunny skies right now. I think as we get into the afternoon, clouds will be on the increase just a little bit, but we're going to go all the way up to 74 degrees. So it's another warm day. And we'll have some warmer temperatures next few days, I think, uh, especially as we get into Tuesday. So let's take a look at the satellite and radar. You see we've got clouds off to the west. These are those high clouds that will be drifting in a little bit later this afternoon. No big deal, just some filtered sun. Tomorrow, though, the clouds will be increasing a little bit more. We could see some rain chances. So warm today, and then some chances for showers tomorrow. I think it'll be isolated, maybe even a straight thunderstorm tomorrow afternoon. And then by midweek, a strong cold front. And yes, there is a slight potential for wintry mix in the hill country. It's not going to be a big deal, but we do have to mention it. It's going to get much colder by the middle part of the week. For the forecast for today, 74 degrees by 4 o'clock, mostly cloudy by the afternoon. And that'll be the case tonight, too. Southwesterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. A lot going on this week. We're going to detail all of it for you coming, on, coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. And new this morning, one woman is dead and a man in critical condition after police say someone rang their doorbell and shot at them. A double shooting happened at the Wall Street Apartments on Vance Jackson near Hebner. That was just before midnight. Now, officers tell us that a woman in her 20s was shot to death in the living room and the man was wounded. Now that man says he opened the door and that's where they were shot. He remains in critical condition at this time. A description of the gunman was not given. And Americans evacuated from overseas after coronavirus fears could be headed here to the Alamo City. Mayor Ron Nirenberg confirmed the news in a statement saying Joint Base San Antonio Lackland will participate in the current evacuation where hundreds will remain in quarantine. Alicia Barrera joins us live from JVSA Lackland Air Force Base with the latest. Alicia. Good morning. Well, this decision comes all the way from Washington, specifically from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of Defense. But before you freak out, one thing that you should know, this step is serves as just a major step of precaution. Um, yesterday, Mayor Ron Nirenberg did release a statement, and the big things to note is that these people who are going to be quarantined here at Lackland um, Air Force Base have not shown any symptoms of this virus, and according to the mayor, they do not pose a risk to the community. In total here in San Antonio, 250 people will be housed here at Lackland. That's according to a tweet from Joint Base San Antonio. And as we reported this week, more than 8,000 cases have been confirmed in China. The symptoms for the coronavirus are similar to the flu. More extreme cases are similar to pneumonia and could be fatal. So far this year, 200 people have died from this virus overseas. But here in San Antonio, things are much different. In a series of tweets, Joyce Bay, Joint, Joint Base San Antonio stated that their personnel will not be in direct contact with the evacuees and the evacuees won't have any access to, to any other area other than their assigned lodging. We know that throughout the country, three other bases, including two in California, one in Colorado, will serve as quarantine. And together, including here in San Antonio, the total number of people that are going to be quarantined would be up to 1,000 people. But what the Department of Defense is saying this morning in regards to this decision, I'll have that for you later on this morning at 8.30. Reporting, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Alicia. Taking a look outside with Transguide, looks like there's a little bit of a holdup there at 35 and Ingle Road. Looks like everything's down to one lane and 
fact, getting off the highway at this time. So if you're headed in that direction, please be careful. Use caution. All right, and speaking of your morning commute, we have a few lane closures, closures that we want you to keep in mind. TxDOT telling us that northbound Highway 410 between Marbach Road and Exit 9 will be closed today until 3 p.m. And then beginning tonight through tomorrow morning, the same exit will be closed from 9 p.m. until 5 a.m. Northbound 410 at Meadow Bend will be closed as well as the turnaround traffic will be diverted to the main lanes. Lastly, 35 both directions between 90 and West Theo Avenue will be closed from 10 p.m. until 5 a.m. The closure is due to upgrades and maintenance on transmission wires. And the Alamo City is such a unique place in that we are growing at a rapid pace and yet have a central identity and culture. So in the next 20 years, we are expecting the population to grow by at least 1 million people. So what's next for San Antonio? In this week's leading essay, I speak with District 1 Councilman Roberto Trevino. His district covers parts of downtown San Antonio and the area just north of it. We talk about a large variety of topics, things like property taxes, the increase of renters here in San Antonio, a new budgeted program to fix sidewalks and new proactive initiatives to prevent gun violence. We want to make sure that the success of one thing does not create or threaten the, the, the existence of another. Bringing in new businesses, new homes, and new money, all while keeping the culture alive. It's a difficult balance San Antonio leaders like District 1 Councilman Roberto Trevino are working to manage. We want people to, to join us, but we also want to protect those that are here, that have made our city special and unique. And so that's, that's what we work hard to do. That's our responsibility as a city. The Councilman is working on a renters commission and bringing a voice to the huge population of renters here in the Alamo City, all while simultaneously working to help homeowners avoid eviction and avoid getting taxed out. So we have a lot of seniors living in their homes on fixed incomes that are having issues take, maintaining their homes and then of course this outside pressure of more development and property taxes and any number of things that that are, are creating these outside pressures that uh, are, are making people feel insecure about housing that's why he started the San Antonio Under One Roof Program. This is a program I started five years ago. It is now funded at $5.25 million a year, which means we get over 500 roofs annually out of this program. We're now close to about 800 roofs that we've completed since the start of the program. Property taxes is a hot button issue here in San Antonio and in Trevino's district. So along with reminding people of the Homestead Act, there are new measures in the works. One of the things that we're going to be trying out is, is a neighborhood empowerment zone. The neighborhood empowerment zone allows the city to, to, to redirect some of these funds to help stabilize what, what property taxes might have created in terms of offsetting those taxes. And viewers told us some of their biggest concerns in District 1, the sidewalks, or in some cases, the lack of sidewalks. We created in last year's budget, we created for the first time ever a sidewalk repair program. So my expectation for sidewalks and for the sidewalk squad is that we need to be tackling this problem and establishing meaningful metrics. Less than two weeks ago, there was a shooting at a bar on the Riverwalk. That shooting left two people dead and five more injured. So what's being done to prevent future gun violence? One of the things we voted on this year is the new entertainment district officers that are going to be uh, out, and, out and about um, making sure that that they look at these areas. Uh, you know, my district sp uh, specifically sees a lot of nightlife. And t I think these new officers are going to be a tremendous resource. And a new first of its kind police facility could also be on the way. We have a new substation coming into uh, north of downtown San Antonio. And what's really amazing about it is we're going to really sort of have a shift in the way we design our substations so that they're more like community centers. This will actually be a place that welcomes maybe a neighborhood association meeting, uh, maybe a community gathering. Trevino has been a councilman since 2014. He has seen growth and he's seen the problems around San Antonio firsthand. And he hopes the steps being taken now can help the future of our city. We are rated dead last when it comes to poverty. We are rated uh, the number one segregated city, economically segregated city in our country. We have created these red lines historically. And uh, you know what I think what I've learned is that the city is, is, is ready to, to, to resolve these things. And this is just a recap of what Councilman Trevino and I spoke about. You can watch the entire interview in its entirety right now on KSAT.com and on demand on the KSAT app. And just a few things that 
you know, jumped out to me uh, while we talked. Obviously, the sidewalks, the infrastructure, that's yes. your district. <laughs> yes, and so, we, we see that, mm -hmm. yeah. So we're glad that, you know, there, there are things being done about the sidewalks and actually even the streets. Uh, it, work is currently being done on our street right now, so we're kind of we're kind of lucky to be part of that whole the whole neighborhood that you know it's going under renovations right now. Um, something he brought up at the end, real quick, uh, just about you know knowing about the poverty level. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, rem you'll remember Roberto Trevino came up with under one roof plan, and so that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's been working to help you know people fix their roofs and you know get the electric bill a little lower. Mm -hmm. And then the new police substation. Which yeah, I was cool. I'm looking forward to that too. I hadn't I hadn't heard about that till now. So yeah, yeah thanks for bringing that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Again, ksat.com. Time now, 810, 41 degrees out. And going out with a bang. Still to come on GMSA, recap of last night's Spurs game against the Charlotte Hornets before they kick off the rodeo road trip. Mm, it's a little tough this year. Mm. We'll preview that. <laughs> All right, plus protecting your identif identity this tax season. Up next, how the Better Business Bureau says you can easily avoid being part of a tax scam. And taking a look outside with live cam. It's a pretty shot of San Beautiful. Antonio right now. We're at 41, so don't let the shot fool you. It's still <laughs> cold outside. I'm <laughs> waiting for that to jump up. It will, it will. So if you're headed to church, running errands, or just making Super Bowl Sunday plans, grab a jacket for right now. We'll be right back. All right, well, as people get ready to file their taxes this season, the Better Bureau's Business Bureau wants to remind you to be cautious, all part of Tax Identity Theft Awareness Week. And all a scammer needs is your social security number to steal your return. So the Better Business Bureau also says to be aware of IRS imposters. If someone calls you and demands money immediately, don't pay it and hang up. Tax Identity Theft Awareness Week runs from February 3rd to February 7th. Be aware. Ooh, gotta be safe out there. I mean, mm. nowadays with everyone having a smartphone or an iPad or something, I feel like it's so easy for people to steal your identity and everything. Yes. So better be safe than sorry. Most and definitely. Once you get hacked, it's a long process to get back. Mm. So yes. you don't. don't you just come up with that? <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I did. That was just, good. Just I'm on impressed. the fly. Just on the yeah, fly. There you yeah. go. Look at you. You're poet. You didn't even know it. What? <laughs> ah, like what she did there. Listen, it's a big day. We had Groundhog Day. Yes. Big game today. Oh, what's the game? <laughs> what's going on? I don't know. Uh, no, we got a big game. 68 degrees, Miami. It's going to be fantastic for the Super Bowl. And really, you compare it to what we got here, it's about the same. 74 degrees and uh, sunny here. So uh, any plans outdoors today? Looks well, good. Are you saying San Antonio should host the Super Bowl? I say okay. we should. That would be amazing. Let's throw that out there. I like that. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> we'd still watch it on TV, but uh, we see the sun's coming up here. This is a time lapse, beautiful shot. You see some of those thin high clouds working across the sky. Uh, really pretty nice this morning, albeit a little bit cold. 41 degrees right now, two point is at 32, and we've got calm winds. Temperatures still in the 30s around Kerrville, 32 degrees there, 43 in New Braunfels, 45 in Gonzales. But you're going to see these numbers across the board warm up pretty fast this morning because we have that dry air and you'll see a, a rapid increase and we should make it to 74 this afternoon. So very similar to yesterday. The only difference is that we are going to see an increase in cloud cover as we get towards the afternoon and it's going to come in the form of these thin high clouds you see out here over Mexico. So those will be working in no rain with these, at least not yet. That comes tomorrow. We will get some rain chances on your Monday. Uh, meantime, this is our next storm system here working uh, over the Pacific Northwest, and this is going to draw down some cold air. So this is going to bring the big changes we've been talking about by midweek. And rather impressive here in the sense that we're going to get a chance, I think, a brief window for some wintry mix in the Hill Country, and that will be Wednesday night. We'll show you that forecast in just a second. But as we look across the country, some snow off to the north and east, snow off to the north and west, but most of us doing pretty good. Temperatures are not that cold considering this is early February, but as we go up into Canada, there are some bitterly cold numbers and this cold air sort of gathering. It will push south and we'll feel a small taste of it. We got a small window here of which we're going to see some colder numbers. So let's walk you through the forecast. Well, let's fast forward to Monday and by five o'clock we've got a couple showers around. I, I think we could even see a thunderstorm tomorrow. Nothing severe, but uh, maybe a couple of rumbles of thunder as a little disturbance works through. 
And then by Tuesday, we're looking at some pretty warm temperatures before our cold front slides in behind this front much colder. We'll see some showers, pretty good chance of showers Wednesday morning here in San Antonio. So it'll be wet, chilly, winds will be gusty. We'll have wind chill values. And then as we get into Wednesday night, uh, well, most of Wednesday afternoon, by the way, probably just cloudy. But as we get into late Wednesday night, we get a little piece of energy coming through. And notice you see some of this pink color here. It's an indication we could see a little bit of a mix. It would be light, and I don't think it would cause really all that uh, many issues because we've been so warm. But it'll be something to watch. Uh, Wednesday night, early Thursday morning, I'd say the hill country here in San Antonio will likely stay above freezing. And by Thursday morning, this clears out, and by Thursday afternoon, we're warming right back up. So again, small window here for this. 74 degrees today, increasing clouds. And then tomorrow, 71 with a 30% chance of showers. 80 on Tuesday, but temperatures in the 40s on Wednesday. Windy, and there's that slight chance of a wintry mix Wednesday night. But we're back up to 57 by Thursday. And next weekend looks pretty good. Yeah, we're, we've been pretty lucky for the weekends. So that's nice. We have, but it, it will be a busy week. Most definitely, especially that Tuesday to Wednesday. Yeah, I just like to say it. You love degrees, it, right? 80 degrees at <laughs> five, right? Come on. Yeah, nice. we're so lucky. It's, it's fantastic. All right, 819, 41 degrees out. And voters in Iowa getting ready to kick off the 2020 presidential nominating season. Just ahead when the presidential hopefuls can expect the real test to begin. And recapping San Antonio's own before facing the L.A. Clippers and Kawhi Leonard. Up next, a look at last night's big win, taking on the Charlotte Hornets. And your winning lotto numbers, you have pick three, eight, seven, seven, fireball eight, daily four, two, four, six, three, fireball nine. Cash five is 20, 23, 21, 30, 32. Powerball 12, 33, 54, 57, 60. Powerball 13, power play four. Good luck. We'll be here. Good morning and welcome back. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. But before we talk about football, we can talk about the Spurs and this man right here, Jakob Podol. Look at him. Euro stepping his way to the basket. An efficient night for him last night. Here's the thing, though. The Spurs found themselves down by as many as 19 points to the Charlotte Hornets last night. All the way in the third quarter, they were able to rally, stand strong, get that big win here at home. DeMar DeRozan finishing with a, a team-high 24 points. We talked about him already. The big man, Jacopoto, an efficient 17 points. Derek White adding in 12 in the silver and black, moving to a record of 22 and 26 before they embark on what looks like Really tough rodeo road trip. So next up, to kick off that rodeo road trip, the Spurs facing a familiar foe at the Staples Center in Los Angeles tomorrow, 9.30 p.m., taking on the L.A. Clippers and taking on former Spur Kawhi Leonard. And the most anticipated game of football season is finally upon us. Super Bowl 54 will be taking place at the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami with thousands expected in attendance. So the teams going up against each other are the San Francisco 49ers and Kansas City Chiefs in Miami. So this year's halftime show will feature Latin artist Shakita and Jennifer Lopez. Tonight's NFL champ will hold the 2019 title as well as the 100th season. Now kickoff begins at 5.30 p.m. That's our time. Yeah. Ah, oh, we're doing it again. That's it. Boom. <laughs> Got it. You gave me the the nice the the, yeah. friend, the friendly gave me a heads the friendly up. pass. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So we've been anticipating this all morning. Mm -hmm. Who you got? You can't say red team this time. <laughs> I know. I've been saying red team mm. the whole time. Okay, Kansas City. Woo! Yeah. Patrick Mahomes. There we yeah, go. That's and that's why. Yeah. yeah. Andy Reid too, but whatever. All right. 825, <laughs> 41 degrees out. A modern take on Hansel and Griddle. The behind the scenes look at the new dark fantasy horror hitting the big screen this weekend. Plus getting struck by a deer out of nowhere. This crazy encounter caught on camera as one man was walking out of a North Carolina McDonald's. Mm, that's they say not fast good. food can be dangerous. Oh. <laughs> well, there you go. Got to be careful. And in our morning headlines, two people are dead after walking out of a Florida funeral. How police say it all went down. And here's a look at some birthdays. We have Jubilee, who is 18 years old. Happy birthday. And next up, Roxanne Michelle, eight years old. Happy birthday. Remember to keep sending your birthdays into ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. Show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA.
Good morning and thank you for starting your Sunday with us. Yes, thanks for joining us on this Super Bowl Sunday, Groundhog Day. So yeah. much. We already yeah. saw Punxsutawney <laughs> Phil. We made our Super Bowl picks. Who do mm -hmm. you have? Kansas City. Kansas City. Yeah. There we go. Let's go. <laughs> Kansas City, Pat Mahomes, yeah. Andy Reid, Justin, what are your thoughts? Oof. Uh, I'm going Kansas City too. I like the way they play. It's fun to watch, but I'm just hoping for a good Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. And I think it will be. I think it'll be competitive. Uh, we just got the pollen count in, and the numbers, not so bad. Uh, looking pretty good. Molds in the low category, Mountain Cedars low, Ashes low. This is what we've seen the last couple days. So hopefully we're on the downswing here when we're talking Mountain Cedar. I think that we are. We always say that Valentine's Day is the unofficial end to Mountain Cedar season, and we're getting pretty close. Uh, Temperature-wise, 36 in Boulevardy, 41 right now at the airport, 42. Castroville, 35 Hondo, 36 in Tarpley. There's still some pretty chilly numbers out there. These are going to start to pop up, though, pretty quickly, and we're going to be in the 70s this afternoon, so we'll see um, a good increase in those temperatures. Satellite picture shows we do have some clouds off to the south and west. These will be shifting in today, so some mostly cloudy conditions, perhaps, as we get later into today, but it shouldn't be a big issue. 74, again, the high temperature. We've got some big changes this week, uh, actually some much colder weather by midweek. Even though the groundhog said spring's going to come early, it may not be the case by Wednesday. We're going to talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. 1,000 American evacuees from overseas will be quarantined at military bases across the West Coast. That includes right here in San Antonio. The evacuation comes after the U.S. government declared the global spread of the coronavirus a public health emergency. So Joint Base San Antonio Lackland will participate in the current evacuation. Alicia Brera joins us live from the Air Force Base with the latest. Alicia? Good morning. Well, just so you know, this decision was made as a major precaution. And one thing that you should know that these evacuees that will be coming back to the United States and some of them here in San Antonio, they haven't shown any symptoms of the coronavirus. Therefore, according to the mayor, they don't pose a risk to our community. In total here in San Antonio, Joint Base San Antonio Lackland will welcome 250 people as we've reported this week, more than 8,000 cases have been confirmed in China. The symptoms for the coronavirus, is, uh, coronavirus are similar to the flu, but the more extreme cases are similar to pneumonia and could, of course, be fatal. So far, 200 people have died from this virus overseas. Here in San Antonio, JBSA Laughlin is now stepping in to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. So you at home may be asking yourself, well, doesn't this put our military at risk? Well, in a series of tweets last night, the assistant to the Secretary of Defense for Public Affairs, Jonathan Rath Hoffman, stated that the Department of Defense approved this request from Health and Human Services for housing support, adding that the department's primary responsibility is the safety of the military force, families, and base communities. Evacuees will only have access to their assigned housing. And in the United States, three other bases Two in California, one in Colorado will also be stepping in to help stop this spread. In total, 1,000 evacuees will be returning to the U.S. and to be quarantined. And we do have a response from Mayor Ron Nierberg as how this will affect San Antonio. We have that full statement now on KSAT.com. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Alicia. New this morning, a man is behind bars after police say he stabbed and killed his friend. 31-year-old Abel Garcia was taken into custody late last night after police say Garcia and his friend had an argument in the 400 block of Harlan Avenue around 2 p.m. this past week. Now, when police arrived, they found 44-year-old Albert Adamant with a major cut on his neck. He was later taken to the hospital where he died from his injuries. And our neighbors south of us in Corpus Christi mourning the loss of a fallen hero after he was hit and killed on a highway this past weekend. Corpus Christi police say they arrested 26-year-old Brandon Portillo for intoxicated manslaughter. All of this after he hit two officers, sending one of them flying down an overpass. Officers Alan McCollum and Michael Love stopped a vehicle for racing on the highway Friday night. That's when Portillo crashed into them. Both officers taken to the hospital. That's where McCollum died. Now, Love still in recovery in remembrance of the fallen and injured officers. The Harbor Bridge was lit up in blue over this past weekend. And police in Florida are looking for a man who shot and killed two people at a funeral. Authorities say the shooting started after a funeral near a church. Now, a 15-year-old boy and 47-year-old man died on the scene. Two others were injured. 
Police say at least 13 rounds were fired. They are still looking for that shooter. And taking a look into the week ahead, President Donald Trump set to deliver his third State of the Union address. That is set for Tuesday night. The theme of this State of the Union, the Great American Comeback. The 2020 presidential nominating season kicks off on Monday with the Iowa caucuses. Beginning at 7 p.m., Democratic voters will gather to select their candidate. And after months of campaigning, this will be the first real-world test for the presidential hopefuls. All right, time now, 836, 41 degrees out. Still ahead, getting a glimpse of the new movie Gretel in Hansel. What moviegoers can expect from the modern take on an old tale. And you might get a kick out of this. Later on GMSA, a look at one man's dangerous encounter with a deer, what he had to say about his walk through a McDonald's parking lot. Ooh, scary. And a bonding experience for generations to come. Up next, how one Northside family is staying healthy in this week's New Week, New You. Yeah, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. A picture perfect start to your Sunday morning. Well, perfect, except for the fact that it's 41 degrees, but we are expecting another beauty out there this morning and this afternoon. Hopefully it is as great as it was yesterday. We're going to check in with our Justin Horn with your full forecast. Good morning and welcome back. 840 this morning. Well, running can be one of the most powerful forms of exercise. In New Week, New You, we've shared countless stories of the sport helping young girls find themselves one woman losing more than 100 pounds. It even helped a man fight addiction. And it became a bonding experience for one Northwest side family. All three generations, a grandfather, his daughter, and his grandson. All right. We are going to get to that story in just a few moments, but before we get there, yes. we have a big movie to talk about. Uh, yes. A new take on an old tale. Yes, David Daniel has this about Hansel and Gretel, but this one's Gretel and Hansel. Mmm. Stay where I can see you. They have a slide. And I don't see any children. It also smells of bacon, you know. Sophia Lillis from It and It Chapter 2 faces off against a classic terror in Gretel and Hansel. The Scary Tale also stars Sammy Leakey in his big screen debut. Tell me the fairy tale again. It's too scary, you know, start seeing things that aren't there. And Star Trek's Borg Queen Alice Krieg as the witch. Careful with that, dear. I'd hate for you to start something you can't stop. The movie takes a new path with the witch, Holda, teaching Gretel how to use the magical gifts she possesses. Fairy tale has a way of getting into your head, even before you hear it. Somehow you just know it. Of course, the witch's dietary desires do more closely follow the original tale. All that is left is to make him. <laughs> Delicious. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. There's something wrong here. All right, well. Critics at Rotten Tomatoes are scoring the movie at 56%, and that's slightly better than the 52% they rated Rise of Skywalker. Ooh, all right, so what, what are you thinking? I, I, I disagree. Well, I haven't even seen it. <laughs> I should give him a fair shake. That's fair. The audience isn't being so nice this time. They gave the movie 20% rating. Ooh. The critics' consensus, Gretel and Hansel's rich visuals satisfy, even if this adaptation of a classic fairy tale gets a little lost in the woods on the storytelling front. All right, looks scary. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so that story that we talked about originally, oh, how running brings go. the family together, three generations of runners. Well, take a look. Early morning wake-ups, trips across the country and across the finish line. For Annabelle Morales, running is a family affair. Without the family being able to, getting up at four or five o'clock in the morning on a weekend while everybody's sleeping and having to train, it's hard. After high school, Annabelle slowed down and took a break from running. Then 10 years ago, she set out on a quest to get back in shape and brought her 67-year-old dad along for the stride. I never ran before. I just started running about 10 years ago in my hometown, Pearsall. Uh, behind the Sonic drive-in, I started doing little runs, and one day she told me, I hey, let's do a run in San Antonio, like a 5K or whatever. And I started doing it, and I just, I got hooked. What started as a leisurely 5K turned into a bonding experience that would take Annabelle's family to new heights they never thought possible. No football, no track, no, no sports at all, and all of a sudden I started 
running. I don't know why. I'm just like Forrest Gump, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Together, this father-daughter pair has run 18 full marathons, including the Boston Marathon twice, which Joe hopes to qualify for again in 2021. People, they ask me, why, why did you run at your age? They look at craziness running a 26 mile, you know, because it's, you, you, you think about it when you're doing your 20 miles and you say, what am I doing to my body? You know, like, oh, but you'd be surprised what your body can take. I mean, I've always looked up to my grandpa, right? But whenever he started running, that just changed the whole game because I saw the how much work he's putting into it and to go through the marathon. The marathon is a painful event and for him to have that kind of mental strength and just body strength to push himself through that, I was just like, wow, like he's probably my top role model of all time. Joe's newfound hobby slowly but surely influenced Annabelle's son, Nathaniel. Uh, they used to put me in a few races here and there and I didn't like it at all. Come seventh grade, eighth grade year, I started seeing a, like a huge development as I just kept on practicing and doing the sport. And it was really shocking to see how good I became. I was like, oh, maybe I can actually do something in this. So good, in fact, that Nathaniel graduated as one of the best at Central Catholic, breaking records and scoring a scholarship to run at Southern Arkansas University. Now the trio puts in even more hours on the run. And the fact that we love the sport so much, it doesn't even seem like we're going out of our way to do things to help them um, keep on growing with this. It's just, it's, it's just fun. Like it's just, it's, it's that sense of accomplishment that you feel when you're crossing over that finish line, or, or you get that PR, or, or just um, being able to see like your family at the end. Annabelle says, with a good support system, anybody can reach their own finish line. I think everybody has the ability to be a runner, and so they just don't know it yet. I think it's just super important that. You know, if you stick together as a family, you encourage each other health-wise health and, um, you know, the possibilities are endless. That's so cool. And so, again, yeah, the father and daughter pair, 18 full marathons. Wow. That's pretty cool. And, of course, a, Nathaniel, like, you know, setting his own records there. You had a good line. It was, uh, anyone could be a runner. Yeah. The, <laughs> and that's ironic because you're a runner. And yes. you, you did the marathon two years ago? Oh, uh, half marathon. Yeah, uh, it's still 13 ago. miles. Yes. Yeah. It still yes. counts. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we know we know what they're going through. So That's pretty awesome. cool. Yeah. All right. So we've been talking about the Super Bowl because yeah. today is Super Bowl Sunday. Mm -hmm. We had a viewer send in a very special picture. Let's see. Can we pull it up on the screen? Yay. There it is. <laughs> Mini Mahomes. Wow. This is awesome. Uh, Joe Vega out of New Braunfels. That's him. I'm gonna take a shot and say that he is a big Patrick <laughs> Mahomes fan. <laughs> I'd say so. <laughs> Pretty That's cool awesome. pick. Thank you for sending it in. Yeah. Look a lot alike. They do yes. look a lot alike. Yes. Shout out yes. to Texas Tech. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, Take we care. got two other right. Texas universities it, here. He's yeah. from Texas. Yeah. yeah. We're okay Call with that. Call to win. We'll yeah. support him. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll support him. So if we want to watch Super Bowl outside, good yeah, idea. Yeah, good weather. Uh, Puxatani Phil. <laughs> My guy. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it is Groundhog Day. If you forgot. Aww. Let's take a look at some of the statistics. He's saying that spring's going to come early this year. Aww. There, there he is. Got it. <laughs> He's a smart groundhog. It was snowing there this morning. Yes. Uh, so he did not see his shadow. So he's calling for an early spring, which he doesn't call for that very often. Mm. This is a big deal. If you're wondering about accuracy, he's about uh, 40% accurate. Eh. Okay. He's he's very scientific. That's not a great very shooting scientific. percentage. He's a, he's a scientific rodent. He's, uh, he's cute. <laughs> I don't know if he's right. I don't, I don't know what groundhogs are, but uh, there They're you go. They're cute. Yes, they are cute. <laughs> and we appreciate Phil putting out his yes. prognostication. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, let's talk about Mountain Cedar real quick, too. We just got the pollen counted. Mountain Cedar is at 70. And so uh, that puts in the low category. And when we're talking about Mountain Cedar season, we are nearing the end. This is good. Uh, we're seeing the downswing here, and I think the numbers are going to stay in the low end. So uh, hopefully we keep this going. We always say Valentine's Day is sort of the uh, unofficial end, and I think we're getting there. So uh, good to see that. Live cam shows we've got a few thin high clouds out there. 41 degrees right now. Dew point is at 32. Calm winds. No wind chill because we don't have much wind, and there's not much wind to go around. Uh, 36 degrees, Kerrville 40, and Uvalde 39 degrees. So springs, we're off to a chilly start. We see a quick rebound today because we have dry air in place. Two points are still in the 30s. This is uh, the dry air that's kind of been settling in the last couple days. And so uh, we'll see some clouds this afternoon, but they're not going to yield any rain. 
It's not until Monday that we get a little more moisture in here and we get some rain chances back in the forecast. But you'll notice most of Texas is pretty quiet here. These thin high clouds you see out to the west will work their way in today. And as we go off to the Pacific Northwest, you see some snow here. This is our next system. This is going to be a pretty big one. It's going to draw in some colder air from Canada and we're going to feel it a little bit Wednesday. You know, January is was a pretty warm month. This is going to change things a little bit. There's a small window there where we're going to get some pretty cold air. It's not going to last very long though. Here's what the forecast looks like. So we get the clouds today. Clouds fairly thick tomorrow. We could see a couple showers and thunderstorms right now about a 30% chance. It'll really be hit or miss tomorrow. And then as we get into Tuesday, Tuesday is probably a quiet day, but we got our front on our doorstep by Tuesday evening and it will move through and create some rain. I think we have some pretty good chances of rain with this. Uh, it'll be a cold rain too once that front passes by some gusty north winds too. And then Wednesday night, there's just enough leftover energy working through that we could see some light precipitation and it may be cold enough for places like Rock Springs to see a little bit of a light wintry mix. Same story in Kerrville. Anything we see is going to be very light. We're not looking for accumulations here. We're not looking for big impacts, but it is something to be aware of. Wednesday night and by Thursday morning this is out of here. We're warming back up on Thursday. So again, this is a small window for anything to happen. 74 degrees today, increasing clouds. We'll go 71 tomorrow, 30% chance of rain. There's the big front 47. That's at the high on Wednesday after getting up to 80 on Tuesday. And then we warm up again by the end of the week. Thank you, Justin. That's going to be pretty interesting in the middle yeah, of the week. Yeah, busy week next week. Yes. Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. 850, 41 degrees up. And caught off guard and caught on camera. Next is surveillance footage caught as one man is plowed by a deer. All right, let's take a look at birthdays this morning. Andres, 10 years old. Happy birthday, Andres. And keep sending in your birthday pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and your age. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be right back. Americans evacuated from China due to coronavirus fears are headed to the Alamo City and this decision it's coming all the way from Washington, specifically from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, as well as the Department of Defense. But in a statement, Mayor not Ron Nirenberg stated that there should be no fear as these people who will be housed at Lackland Air Force Base have not shown any symptoms of the virus, nor do they pose a risk to the community. In total, 250 people will be housed at the military base. That's according to a tweet from Joint Base San Antonio. And the symptoms for the coronavirus, they are similar to the flu. And in more extreme cases, they're similar to pneumonia and could even be fatal. So far, 200 people have died from this virus overseas. But here in San Antonio, things are much different. Joint Base San Antonio tweeted that their personnel will not be in direct contact with these evacuees and these evacuees won't have access to any area here at Lackland Air Force Base other than their assigned lodging. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. And we're at 57 degrees right now, 74 this afternoon. Chances showers tomorrow and a strong cold front by midweek that brings some changes by Wednesday. Very well. All Thank right. you. This is what we got right before we go. We've been teasing all morning long. Oh, Look at that. Ooh, so that's a surveillance video caught in North Carolina when the one man was plowed by a deer in the middle of a McDonald's parking lot. The man says it just came out of nowhere. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, the it's retired detective Ken Worthy says the encounter caught him completely off guard walking out of McDonald's. Oh, my goodness. So he said he wasn't hurt. But he didn't spill his Diet Coke either. That's well, that's important. Big win. Big win. <laughs> well, we oh talk God. about fast food being dangerous right there. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Happy Have Super a Bowl Have great Sunday. rest of your day. Go Chiefs. Right. <laughs>